And uh, yeah, I had a little challenge logging in, but it uh, looks like we're here. And if we're all ready, we can get started. Yes, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, you can always just put them in the chat and we will address them the best we can. So I've been doing these FX Street sessions for uh, many years now, I believe since, I want to say 2009, 2010. Um, for sure 11, but I think we started before that. And um, absolutely everything uh, everything we do with regard to supply demand strategy, uh, not one thing has changed since we started. So it's always the same rules. And the key is to keep them uh, simple, keep it very simple and, uh, you know, and discipline, right? That's the, uh, yeah, it, might, it could be back to 2006, it could. In fact, uh, I don't know if any of you have been around this long, but we actually did an event in the very early days of FX Street in Barcelona. Uh, I don't know if anybody was at that event, but uh, that was uh, that was way back. But that was that was great. So we just kind of a few days of live trading and all that. Um, good stuff. Okay, so uh, yeah, big uh, big shout out to FX Street for being the uh, facilitator of a lot of this stuff, bringing a lot of people together. Good stuff. Okay. So the last few sessions we have been um, very, very, they've been very lesson based uh, today. What I thought we would do is spend all of our time in the live markets and apply everything we've been learning. Okay. Remember the strategy is to um, focus on pure supply and demand, right? looking at the price charts to quantify the real supply and demand in any and all markets and for in really any time frame. So for any financial purpose, day trading, swing trading, um, longer term investing, stocks, futures, Forex, bonds, crypto, you know, you name it, obviously options uh, with everything. Um, the, the, all the rules apply equally. Uh, yeah, we can certainly look at equity demand zones and cryptos as well. You know, because because some people some people ask sometimes, you know, does the strategy work here or does it work in this time frame or in this market? Remember, be careful thinking of it like that. It's people. Any market, right? Uh, it's people behind all these trading markets, and it's people buying and selling behind all these trading markets. Therefore, supply and demand is at play everywhere. So that's why it's we just apply the strategy equally, right? Or the rules and strategy applies to any market, any time frame. Now remember, if you've if you've been going to you know if you've been to some of the recent lesson sessions, there are supply and demand imbalances everywhere. Every time you get a move up or down, even a minimum minimal price point in a market, it's because of a supply demand imbalance. What we care about and what we focus on is identifying the big supply demand imbalances and then those that are far apart from each other because um, that's where prices are most likely to turn and the, the finding these big supply demand imbalances that are far apart from each other means we have a large profit zone, which is nice, we want that, and, um, and Profit zone and probability go hand in hand. You, we could absolutely take the symbol off uh, time frames and charts, and it uh, it certainly would not would not matter exactly. In fact, let me um, I wasn't going to do this, but let me share something with you here. To to that point, Sam Bragg, and, and just for newer people to the group, and then after this, we'll dive into the live markets. Let me take you to. Um, let me take you to, uh, this was this morning session. So it's funny you bring that up. So I do a, do a live session uh, each morning with Jasmine where we cover the major global markets, um, equities, FX, and all that. And by the way, anyone that wants to uh, 
uh, be in those sessions for a full week. So you can, and you'll see what we really do there. All of our, all of our trading opportunities, all of the trades that we take, things like that. You can be in those live sessions with us if you want. Um, I can, I can give you information on that. Yes. Uh, but anyway, here was our session from this morning. We always start with a thought of the day. Um, but anyway, again, the, the point is, our our job, our this this screenshot is right out of the uh, the Pinnacle Method course, so that's the supply demand strategy. But our job, when I say our job, I'm talking about all of us here, anyone who's watching this. It's not to wake up every day, every week, every month and trade. It's to get up, uh, look at the markets, and find markets where prices are at levels where supply and demand is significantly out of balance, either out at supply here or out at demand here and simply trade that market back to relative balance. And if you think about it, that's how you make money buying and selling anything, right? So um, uh, today was a good example of what you said a moment ago in the chat. And let me share with you, meaning, uh, and all of these that I'm showing you here are from pretty much from yesterday, day before. So we update every day. Um, uh, yesterday, while supply and demand was fairly close in equity index markets there were there's other opportunities and um there were called some day trading sessions here in uh the dollar and uh the exchanges are uh, you see on the top there those are our, our day trading sessions every day the forum is is the session that i do each day and then there's a 15 minute break and then uh, we have the exchange which are the day trading sessions so yesterday the dollar left a footprint of significant demand meaning banks were buying dollars down here yesterday right and uh, at the same time there was a big footprint of supply banks were selling euros in a big way up here now how can we be so sure of that right well notice for people who are new price was trading sideways supply demand appears to be in balance while it's moving sideways you can see the bigger picture here but then all of a sudden there's a big rally out of that zone okay that rally only happens because supply and demand is out of balance here the moment price starts to rally higher out of this zone it's because you have no more sellers at this price point and a, a good amount of demand or buyers left over. That competition to buy pushes price higher, right? That's this, competition to buy. Um, uh, same thing, just the opposite with the euro, okay? And uh, then when price comes all the way back down to that demand zone, we can see that competition is fierce down here. Price just touches the level, which is where we want to buy. Uh, with our protective sell stop just below the level, in case we're wrong, to make sure it's a very small loss. And then um, uh, and then our, you know, our profit target above, just according to the chart, right? So this one played out for, you know, a, a good uh, three, four, four to one, uh, three, four to one, if, depending on where your target, profit target was. But... Um, Good question, Tommy. Would we buy at this demand zone again? So we follow very specific rules, not a lot of rules. They're simple rules, but we really stick to rules. And yes, in in, in this case, the fact that price just touched the level and turned, um, we would we would we would use the demand zone again. Um, but the only thing we would check for when using that demand zone again, we're fine on the demand side, but we want to make sure that there's a, a still a significant profit zone when price comes back that second time most of the time there will be because the initial th this rally tends to open up profit zone to the upside it's all about the buy and sell orders that's what we're quantifying here i we don't care who's buying and selling um or anything like that but um but what we care about is quantifying that actual supply end. so that was an example yesterday um, platinum yesterday. So, so Sam Bragg, what you said earlier, like if you change the symbol, change everything, you know, um, does it matter? And again, you know, here's platinum, right? So platinum came into a nice supply zone yesterday. Um, you know, how many people in our group here know anything about the platinum market? Probably not much, but the thing is 
how much do you need to know about platinum to take uh, uh, advantage of this trade? Now you need to know the price points. You need to be for sure to, to quantify the risk and reward, which is extremely important, right? We don't want to get involved in anything without knowing the risk. Um, so, but the point is, this supply zone and the supply and demand governing dynamics that uh, made this work as it did are exactly the same as this supply zone here in the euro, right? That made this work out as it did. Does everybody understand that? Because what's the what is even though the euro, for example, and platinum are two totally different markets. One's a currency. One's a one's a metal. What, tell me this, what are the two things that are exactly the same about these two markets? There's two things that are exactly the same. The, the product is completely different. Or let me give you another example while you're thinking of the answer. How about live cattle, right? A few days ago, that one came down to our demand zone, right? We hardly have, we don't trade live cattle much. We don't look at it much, but it happened to have an, a, 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 an opportunity right? And the equity index markets weren't offering much because uh, supply demand was close. So uh, we looked here. But what is live cattle? What are the two things live cattle, platinum, and the euro here and the dollar all have in common? Common, sorry. One is supply and demand. So how prices move in those markets is exactly the same. It's all a function of the same supply and demand governing dynamic. What's the second thing that all of these markets have in common? It's people that are trading them. The only difference is the product. But, but how much does the product matter when it comes to our decisions and how we arrive at the decisions to buy and sell? Does it matter at all? Right? What matters is, is people making these decisions and the governing, and that doesn't even really matter, right? Even if a computer is making the decision, it's still the same supply demand governing dynamic. Anyway, I wasn't going to bring any of this up, but a couple of you mentioned something in the chat, and I just wanted to show you that whatever this symbol is, it doesn't matter, right? Okay. Here's the euro pound. You know, in fact, if I switch this and said this is live cattle and the cattle, is the euro pound, would that change the decision you're making in that market? No. Okay. All right, let's get back to the, um, oh, let's go to this one real quick. Here's a market that most people are familiar with. So notice here, uh, a couple days, a few days ago, we had a, um, we identified this demand zone. Now, what, you, what the chart doesn't show is in the pre-market, uh, the Dow was gapping up and you can see as soon as the market opened that day, there's the gap up. So that left a footprint of demand right here, right? So that's a setup. It took a few days, but yesterday the Dow came back down to this price level where the chart was telling us demand exceeded its exceeded supply, meaning this zone right here, whoops, was down in here. It wasn't in up here, and it certainly wasn't here. It was down here. And in, and because of the rules that we follow, it likely had a had a supply demand imbalance like that, right? Maybe not that big, but but big enough. Okay. So if we go to the um, the live markets here, let's take a look. Okay. So here's here's that here's what that did. You could see price did not go deep into this level at all. Hung out here for a few days, right? Overall, the equity index markets are not that strong. They're just you know we've got you know what we're dealing with in equities overall is you know this demand zone here against um, there's some supply zones as well. We may have looked at this one last time. I'm not sure, but we've been dealing with this supply zone right here in the NASDAQ. Nothing great. I wouldn't necessarily even expect this to hold, um, but it's what's been sitting up here. That's where the significant sell orders have been this week in equities and, um, and just below in the Dow and a couple other markets, we've had some demand. Does that make sense? And even though the Dow and NASDAQ are not the same, they're, they're 
pretty, all these equity index markets are, you know, in the exact same family. So the point is when um, your supply and demand zones are close like that, why not look at other markets? Um, okay. Anyway. All right. So let's dive in. I can certainly look at any symbol that you want. Um, we'll, um, the plan was to keep it. Uh, we don't have to keep it to FX. We have a whole list of FX markets and opportunities to go over with you. Um, but I, but we can look at any market, right? Sure. We can take a, uh, we can take a quick peek at the S and P and let's go there and find some opportunities. So the S and P after, uh, let's start right here. So after trading off of our, this is last week, um, or right, right in here. Yeah. Anyway, um, or this is the low of the week before I'll show you uh, another one in a second. So after trading off of our demand zone here and moving higher, we can see we've been kind of in this big, big range up here, right? So we do have a, when we look for demand, and actually the, the better market to look at, uh, well, no, this is fine. We'll, we'll stay here, but I wanted to just, uh, we'll go to, I'm going to show you another equity index market in a moment that'll help. Uh, let's go to 30. Okay. So even though this level, this zone looks far from current price and it kind of is, Remember, in the, in the big picture, this is actually in the range. So it's not high probability, right? These markets have moved quite far from um, fresh demand, at least. When we go down to, um, whoops, let me go to a, let me go to this time frame right here. So we have a couple demand zones sitting a little bit closer to current price. So this is the 4140 area. Now watch this. A lot of people have been, um, where is it? There we go. So a lot of people have been looking at this saying, uh, you know, wait a minute. What about what people have been asking about? I'm just going to put these two together, right? little, you know, pattern of demand there. We actually almost got down there yesterday. And there, and certainly demand did exceed supply here and, and perhaps does ex exceed, oh, it does exceed supply here. We know that for sure right now, uh, otherwise price would be there, right? Um, but when price comes back to this level, should we be a buyer here? Well, it, it um, demand likely exceeds supply here. We're likely to see a bounce from here, but it's not high probability enough for us. And uh, let me explain why. One of the reasons is you can see directly to the left, you see how price is right before the level, went above the level, went below the level, kind of with ease. You don't want to see that just before your supply or demand zones. And think the simple logic through. If supply and demand is so out of balance here, why is price trading so easily below and above the zone just before it? I mean, there's really a big supply demand imbalance here on the demand side. Price should spend very little time here and shoot higher, right? Remember, um, you see that very little trading price shoots away from that area. Okay, um, but anyway, you see, you see what I'm saying here. So, and and then when we look inside that, let's let's go do that now. I don't know, let's go to like uh, maybe this chart right here. Here's those two areas, okay, uh, in here. So we can look at this whole range and, and we, we know that if there was a significant supply demand zone in here on the demand side, the picture would not look like that. So we wanna look below this area. And when we look below this area, so now we need to get below 41.42, Okay. That's where we come right over here and look what look what's sitting just below that at 4140. 
Now, again, for a lot of you who are kind of new to this, I don't expect you to, no one's expecting to be able to get this and just go and be able to do this. That's, that's, uh, but you know, we try to give you the most we can in the, in the 45 minutes we spend here together in these sessions. Um, but that's how we arrived at those, uh, those two zones on top of each other, right? So when price was trading here, it spent very little time and rallied away. We know that that can only happen because of a supply demand imbalance here on the demand side. Price attempted to come back to the zone a couple times here, could not. So that's uh, some secondary evidence suggesting a big supply demand imbalance here. Make sense? Uh, so I know whoever asked for the S&P, I know we, I said we'll go over it real quick and that was probably much longer than real quick. Uh, but I want you to understand, uh, you know, why, uh, you know, we go with the zones, we do. They have to meet our criteria. Okay, next market, uh, let's see, I think was um, dollar yen. Yep, no problem. We can look at spot Forex, we can look at the futures, doesn't matter. So let's bring up the, uh, let's bring up the dollar yen. Okay, and here we're going to look at a, a few time frames. So we had this uh, zone here on the 420, with, which worked out fine. Um, not the greatest zone, you know, so no surprise we're going through that. On the demand side, bigger picture, we need to get below this whole range. Anything like even this zone here, yeah, it worked out fine here, but it's inside this whole range, right? So this, anything inside here is this. We don't typically want to be entering positions inside the novice space. There's, you know, this is where the majority of trading volume is always going to be, but that's because supply and demand is not that out of balance. So trying to pick turning points in there, good, good luck with that. And that's why the majority of, you know, it's well known that, the majority of active traders lose money and we know that most long-term investors don't achieve their financial goals. You know, you think about why that is, um, think of most strategies that people use. If you use a trend following strategy, if you use indicators and oscillators, if you use conventional chart patterns with all of those different strategies, where are you buying and selling? Think about it with any of those strategies, where are your entry points into the markets? With a trend following strategy, are you buying at demand and selling at supply? Using indicators and oscillators, though, remember where those entries are, are you buying at demand and selling at supply? Using conventional chart patterns, are you buying at demand and selling at supply? No. Using an economic calendar and buying when the news is good and selling when the news is bad, I see what you put in the chat there, are you buying at demand and selling at supply? No. With all those strategies, you're buying and selling, you're entering the market right here in the novice space. And that is the single biggest reason the majority of traders lose money. Okay. How many times have you heard a new trader say, um, boy, if I just took the opposite side of all my trades, I would have so much money. Have you heard people say that before? If I just took the opposite side of all my trades, I'd have such a high winning percentage, right? Do you think that's just like a coincidence? Why do you think that is? It's because most people are trained and conditioned to be the last buyer and the last seller. Maybe not the very last buyer and very last seller, but you get the point. Right? All of those strategies we just mentioned, have you buy after everybody else has bought and have you sell after everybody else has sold? That's why there's such a gap in performance between the professional and everybody else. Right. And all I'm doing with you here, I'm just the messenger. So, you know, when I started on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, I got to see uh, how the markets really work and uh, and develop the supply demand strategy while, you know, I was on the professional side of the business. So uh, anyway, let's dive back into live markets. And uh, OK, so with the end, now let's find our fresh zones and let's go to the. 
By the way, if we do get a big drop at the end, uh, not likely anytime soon, don't forget we've got some really key larger time frame zones down here. Uh, but that's way below, so we're not uh, likely to get there anytime soon. Let's go back to the 420 here. Here's those two demand zones that are sitting just below uh, this big range here. And um, that uh, uh, those are reachable. So this is um, demand or wholesale prices down here. And then on the supply side, again, if we get above the range, so sitting just above this high, a uh, little just above 111, we've got a supply zone there. We call this secondary evidence. Notice price could not even get back there. And that's because supply and demand is likely to be so out of balance here. That's what the chart is suggesting, right? And then, of course, uh, in the lower end of the recent range, okay, uh, this level's already touched, but uh, uh, we could probably take it again. Sitting just below 108.36, uh, two demand zones on top of each other. If you want to keep it higher probability, you'd probably focus on the lower zone. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, there is some trading to the left of this. That's why... If you want to, you know, if you want higher probability, I mean, these these seem fine, but if you want higher probability than this, you, you'd have to wait for, um, you, that's why you wait for these. You see the difference? I see your question in the chat there. Okay, those two zones I just showed you are up in here. So you're still inside the range. So th the zones right there, maybe this will help, are, are likely to be, you know, in here. In the novice space, but but down at the bottom of the novice space. If you want to get down here, well, you're going to have to wait for levels like these. Okay. And then last uh, but not least, let's go to. Um, uh, no, that's it. So there's your fresh supply demand zones above and below in the yen. And where do you want to go next? Again, I've got a uh, I've got a ton of markets to go over here if you want. Uh, but I'm always happy to look at the markets you want to look at. All right, let's go look at gold. So gold just hit. Um, gold just hit supply zones for us. Let's go to gold. And gold is going to be right up here. There we go. Okay, so gold is, um, this actually just hit yesterday. So here's a zone uh, from our sessions, the 1909. And I don't know if there's, if, if there's any uh, uh, Pinnacle members in our group here today, but you, uh, you're probably aware of this one. Um, now, price just went into the zone, uh, not deep at all. In fact, it looks like the high was about uh, 19, right around 1913, right? So if we traded back just above 1913, we would expect prices to turn lower again. Okay. Um, and if your uh, GLD doesn't look like it met entry, but actually in uh, pre or post market trading, it did. Okay, so you'd have to add that, uh, that trading in there. But anyway, this is kind of two zones on top of each other. And then on the demand side, there's quite a bit of room to the 1794. So uh, we'll just, uh, you know, leave it at that. Um, and let's see if we have any others. Uh, yeah, th well, actually, there are some other zones we can go over here. So let's take a look at the 60. Uh, nope, not that one. Um, oh, the 420. There we go. Yeah, so so I think you're talking about uh, this this 1917 up here. Is that the level you're you're talking about? Yeah, well, that's that's fine too. This is just the yeah that that's nothing wrong with that one, right? So 1917 to 1930, you can see what kind of reaction we're having off the first part of that uh, supply zone. You don't see it here, um, but you do see it on a smaller time frame. And you know you may have for now, Sam. You may have missed it for now, and that's totally okay. Uh, but uh, but if it does go back up here, then um, we would expect prices to come turn lower 
and we, we just saw where the demand zones are from the uh, from the 120, 120 minute. Okay. Now the again this zone is very this this next this demand zone is very far from current price. But if you want to get the below the range and focus on you know high probability opportunities, that would be uh, that would be down there. Tommy, 1821. Let's take a look at that for you. So you're talking this area here. So let's go look at that on a little bit smaller time frame. Uh, I believe this one. So anybody that's uh, been through the program, let's see if someone else can answer this before I do. Would that qualify as a demand zone? Yes or no? And if you've been through the program, you should know without even thinking. This would not qualify as a demand zone. Why not? So it's this, you see this wick to the downside, uh, especially at the end of the base. So Tommy, think about it. The question really is, is does demand exceed supply in a big way here? Um, well, if it did, why would why did price go down to 1819 and then trade higher? So if if demand truly exceeded supply at 1821, would it even be possible to trade down to 1819? You see what I'm saying? If the floor was really that strong, you know, are you going to go through it? So that's that's the point. Um, you know, so a big wick to the downside, you know, usually we like to see it bigger than this to disqualify, but that's always going to disqualify a demand or uh, supply zone. Okay. And, and really just keep it nice and simple. If you think there's demand at, at, you know the, the the demand exceeds supply in a big way at 1823. Well, it it shouldn't trade 1822. Now, for me, you know, you think of my days on the trading floor. I've got a big stack of orders to buy at let's say 1821. What has to it, what has to happen for price to get down to 1819? I mean, what has to happen to get to 1819? Right, you every single buy order at 1821 needs to be filled first. Every single one, and then all the orders at 1820. Okay, so um, anyway, I don't want to make a too big of a point out of it, but when you see a big wick to the downside, especially near the end of a base, or a big wick to the upside at the end of a supply base, right, or a base that you think is supply, that will um, that will always disqualify that zone. So be careful with that. You know, and then a lot, you know, sometimes prices will come back to a zone like this and it'll go right through and people say, wow, price, you know, went right through that demand zone. Well, it's not a demand zone. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. So I think we've got, uh, we've got our, our zones in gold. Um, any other markets you want to look at? Otherwise I can go through, uh, my list. I know we don't have a, a ton of time left, but um, Bitcoin. Let's look at Bitcoin. Sure. Um, here are the Bitcoin futures. So um, right here. Okay. So let's take a look. Uh, let's go to the daily for a moment. Okay, so a blue circle um, that means we're we're watching this area, um, but it, that's not a supply or demand zone. Big picture, then we'll move on and, and look at other time frames. Um, we uh, obviously some significant uh, a significant supply zone above the 48 eight, 48, uh, eight area, and then um, obviously way down here. We have some gap demand, but both of those areas are very far from current price. 
So let's go to the uh, more the spot version of this. And we're going to look at uh, one, possibly two time frames here. Uh, that zone is, yeah, that's kind of not close to current price, but there's really nothing fresh in here. So, uh, and look, Bitcoin can be up here again, no problem. Uh, 537, 53,765. And then if we go here, uh, no, not that chart. Um, where was the other one? You know, I don't have that on my list, but that's really what we have right now uh, for Bitcoin. Right. We can, you know, here's the thing. When you look at the maybe the 60 minute chart is the best uh, way to look at it. We don't want to be a buyer or seller anywhere here in this range. That's where people lose money. So we want to get out of that area uh, to get up to fresh quality you know supplies uh, supplies zones and then we want to get below this range to get down to the quality demand zones they're there we just need to get there right now that mark that you know bitcoin and uh, a couple of the others are sitting sort of right in the middle okay a uh, good question there about level two so yeah we don't use it you know i remember i remember when level two came out many 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 years ago and uh, I thought, wow, this is uh, another another way for the Wall Street professional to, uh, you know, take money from the novice trader. So what's the attraction to uh, what's the attraction to level two, JC? Right. For most people, it's the and feel free to answer the question if you want. But for most people, it's it's oh, I can see who's buying and selling and how much they're buying and selling. Right. Isn't that the attraction to level two? Um, yeah, well, here's the question. Is it really showing you how much everybody is buying and selling? Right. That's, that's the important question. Oh, it's, 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 it's right. That's the question. So, um, the, the answer is a big no. In fact, the way that level two works is the way that same way that all this works. If you're a big Let's say you're a big bank, a big financial institution, and you have a lot of, I don't know, what market do you trade, JC? What's your what's your market? We'll we'll go there. And again, we can look at anything. All right, you trade stocks. So how about how about Amazon? Let's go to Amazon. We recently um uh, so I'll show you here. I think it's in here. Um Anyway, let me get back to, I'll get back to live market. So, oh, no, no, here, it's actually right here, I think. Amazon, we just went over this with their, these are all from uh, the morning session. And there's our Amazon. So, uh, this is all from our morning session right here. Okay. And this is just from last week. So if you're a financial institution, and obviously some banks, some financial institution, maybe a number of them, obviously have a lot of Amazon they want to buy. Someone's buying a lot of Amazon down here, right? We, we get the pattern picture that shows us demand. Obviously it worked out, worked out fine. Amazon rallied strong off this zone uh, over the past uh, week or two. Whoever is buying down here, when price is actually here, like it was, what are you likely to see in the level two? What What is level two likely to show you? Whoever's buying down here, are you likely to see that group, you know, that whoever, whatever their kind of symbol is in the level two and the amount that they're buying, their bids? Are you likely to see that down here? No, in fact, you're likely to see the opposite. Okay. If you want to buy down here, now there's a smart buyer down here and probably a bunch of smart buyers that we see that, right? Um, but whoever those buyers are, okay, whoever those buyers are, are they, um, 
if you want to buy down there, what do you need to do? What has to happen? Right? If you really want to buy down there, and obviously smart buyers are buying down there, what, what needs to happen? People need to be invited, enticed to sell. You need someone to sell to you, right? If you want to buy down there, you need someone to sell to you. What's one of the things you can do that would get people excited to sell to you? What's one of the things you can do? What if you're a big bank? Why not put some big offers into the level two? Why not show some big size on the sell side? It happens all the time. And I bet if you can look back, right, and we're, or we're watching level two when price was right here and Amazon back here, um, I bet if you look at the level two, you will see some huge offers when price is down here, right? Because they know that what a lot of people do is they'll, they'll see those offers and say, oh, big financial institution is, is selling, a big bank is selling, I should sell too. Well, those, those, those orders are flashed in there. Maybe some of them get filled sometimes, but, but usually not. What's happening behind the scenes that you don't see, right? Because remember, when level two came out, something, something, there's a, there's something else that came out, you know, with or shortly after level two. Anybody remember what that is? The ability to hide your real order. If you want to buy fifty thousand shares, you, you can show, you can show that you're buying a hundred shares at a time. You don't have to show the whole fifty thousand, right? Okay, so uh, be very careful with level two. What you will see at key turning points in the market is, uh, let, let's say at demand, you'll typically see the offer at, at quality demand zones in any market, you'll see the offer get much bigger than the bids. And where most people think, ooh, the market's going to go lower. That's usually, a, you know, you look at the chart and you see you're in demand, that's probably... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's usually a good idea to buy. Same thing in the FX market. So, who trades spot FX here? It's it's yeah, it's this, it's the same thing. So, in spot FX, when you come into key supply and demand zones that that we go over here, what happens to the spread typically? Does it get wide or narrow? It widens. And what does that what, what what does that do to a lot of people? Does that get a lot of people to want to get in, or 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 does it scare people out of entering the market? Right? Yeah, it's it scares people from entering the market. But but think of how the markets work. Why is the spread getting wide at a key supplier demand zone? Because it's a because price is very likely to turn there. The, 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 the person or group or bank making that market knows that. So they have to price in their profit. If, if, if you're going to force a market maker to sell at demand, they're not going to take a loss, right? So that's got to be priced in first. That's why the spread gets wide. So while a wider spread scares people out of entering a position, if you really understand how the market works, that's usually a good thing. Of course, always look at the chart. Make sure there's a supply demand zone there, right? Anyway, um, so I know we're um, I know we are out of time, but um, if you want more of this and want to uh, do a lot more of this, you can always come to the uh, one of these workshops. Typically, the advanced workshop. And so from here, if you go to the advanced workshop, you can then spend a week in those morning sessions with us and you can see us do all this live and uh, um, and uh, you'd be with me and Jasmine if you want. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you again in the uh, in these FX street sessions. We do uh, one or two a month. So uh, there's those there's those workshops there. You just um, go to the. Um, go to the link. Um, you can always go to uh, the Pinnacle Institute .com. It's it's all uh, it's all there. All there for you. OK. Um, on that note, we will see you. Uh, 
good spending time again together and uh, we'll see you. Uh, oh, there's the there's the uh, URL at the bottom of the screen there. You can just go to the Pinnacle Institute dot com and, and get to the events there anyway. So we'll see some of you in those morning sessions and otherwise we'll see you again at FX Street and. Um, we'll uh, see you soon. All right.